Well, Mr. Prime Minister and Sarah, it is a great honor uh, for Karen and me to be in your home tonight. And, um, and the events of this day have been deeply humbling for me, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, the American people cherish our relationship with Israel. And your comments today before the Knesset, your comments here this evening, your gracious words toward our president and myself are deeply meaningful to me and I know meaningful to every American who cherishes our historic alliance. It is, uh, it is an honor for me to stand with you here today in Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Israel. <laughs> I spoke to the President this afternoon, shortly after my address, and he asked me to give you not only his greetings, but his thanks. Thank you for the hospitality and the warm welcome you've extended to his Vice President. But more to the point, the President wanted me to thank you for your stirring words before the Knesset and your stalwart commitment to freedom, your strong leadership for the people of Israel, and your commitment, your unbending commitment to the relationship between the United States and Israel. Over the past three days, I've, I've had the opportunity to travel across this region. Met with President el-Sisi in Egypt, King Abdullah in Jordan. We talked about the changing times in which we live. Those two nations, as I said today, that forged peace with Israel years ago and now recognize the rise of a common threat in Iran and the opportunity that we have for, in your words, Mr. Prime Minister, a broader reconciliation across the region. And we share that aspiration and that ambition. But I'm here today in Israel to simply celebrate and affirm the bond between our two people. We stand together for our prosperity and our security. We stand together in the battle against radical Islamic terrorism. And we stand together for a brighter future for both of our nations. Before we return to the United States tomorrow, Karen and I will take a moment to pay our respects at Yad Vashem. And we'll have the privilege to pray at the Western Wall. And I must tell you, this is our fourth trip to the Holy Land. But we never fail to leave here without a sense that our faith has been renewed. Our faith in God. But also our, our faith in the extraordinary people of Israel and in their commitment to freedom and security and peace. And I must say, I leave here with confidence that with President Trump in the White House and with your strong leadership here in Israel, that the best days for the United States and our most cherished ally, Israel, are yet to come. Thank you. Karen and I look forward to a lovely dinner with you and Sarah, and we are grateful for your Thank friendship you, and hospitality. Prime Minister has granted me leave to address uh, news on the home front back in the United States. And let me say, we welcome the news that thanks to the firm stand taken by President Trump and House and Senate Republicans, the government shutdown in Washington, D.C. is coming to an end. Great. Now, the American people know what happened here. A minority in the United States Senate chose to shut down the government, denying our soldiers benefits and wages that they earned, jeopardizing government services just to advance an issue pertaining to illegal immigration. 
but the Schumer shutdown failed. Now that the government is reopening, Congress can get back to work advancing the President's agenda, an agenda that's already created more than two million jobs, is setting records on the American stock market, has restored American strength and credibility in the world. And I look forward to returning to Washington, D.C. tomorrow and working closely with members of Congress to continue to advance our President's agenda. And it is, Mr. Prime Minister, an agenda that's making America great again. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. You're all invited to our budget deliberations in the Knesset <laughs> in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.